Well, certainly issues of corruption in public service is not acceptable, but no one would say it is a new trend. From time to time, there have been allegations of corruption, in some cases, media try and others, uh, and in some other cases, that is, the, the cases are buried and forgotten. Abu Rashid Maina, Babachi Lawal, are you okay? The Zianyalisi Madwiki, a few names you have heard in recent time, and they all have something in common. Allegations of corruption. Let's put that on old on one hand. On November 29th, the Minister of Finance, Kemi Adioshin, suspended the Director General of the Securities and Exchange Commission, Sir Munir Gwazo, from office to allow for an unhindered investigation of several allegations of financial impropriety leveled against the Director General. The SECA faced scandals in the past with allegations of corruption hanging around the neck of the capital market regulator. It is five years, but many will still remember the face-off between the then-sec boss, Aru Malte. Yes, you remember her. And the chairman of the committee investigating issues in SEC at that time, Honorable Hemen Embe, who has been sacked by the court now, who is also the chairman of the House Committee on Capital Market. Let's refresh your memory now with this video. Watch. When I accepted to take this job, I was told that when I fight corruption, that corruption will fight me back. But I could not have imagined that that will happen in the House Committee on Capital Markets. And now I question, Honorable Chairman, your credibility in carrying out this public hearing. The reason I question your credibility in carrying out this public hearing was that on October 20th, the SEC gave you Esther Code and a business class ticket to travel to an emerging market conference in Dominican Republic. Please tell the Nigerian people whether you actually went there. In, and this was in, in, in November. And please also tell the Nigerian people, if you didn't go, whether you have returned the money. Put up your microphone. Put up your microphone. No, but I'm questioning your please credibility put up to the microphone. Chair. Please. Fundamentally, like every other thing that is happening here, it is being recorded verbatim and will be taken into account at the point of making the final report. I will take into account the fact that I collected money, I, 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 I am alleged to have collected money to travel and I didn't travel. That requested for 39 million from SEC for this public hearing and that yesterday or the day before we collected 5 million. Okay. Oh, we asked for five million. Okay, I did. And then, and then uh, that, we, that I asked for five million, and that the, de <laughs> the deputy speaker, his wife works with works with the Nigeria Stock Exchange, and his auntie is also the uh, Ndi Okereke, who was formerly in the Stock Exchange, who you probably have issues with. So the house cannot be properly said to be fair. Well, then, you, you, you've seen the video. In the video you just watched, there is a big question of credibility raised by Aramote. In the new case involving Munuri Guazo, I mean the suspended DG, there is a question of financial impropriety, but of utmost concern is the need to see this through. So on the floor of the House of Representatives, uh, the issue came up. Watch this. House observes that there are allegations of interference by the Ministry of Finance in the discharge of the responsibility by SEC, particularly the Oando Forensic Audit matter, which has largely and is largely responsible for the suspension of the Director General. The House also observes that the intervention by the House will put the matter into proper perspective and amicable resolution of the conflicts. In order to protect the image of the Securities and Exchange Commission in the interest of both local and foreign investors. That gives us a premise to get the conversation started. I have a lawyer here. We'll be looking at the legality of the suspension and the issues of allegations of corruption. I have a legal practitioner, Mr. Robert Emukboro. Thank you so much for joining us on the program tonight. Thank you so much for having me. In the eyes of the law, 
Is the suspension of Mr. Guasso lawful? In the eyes of the law, the suspension of uh, Mr. Munir Guazo by the Minister of Finance does not appear to enjoy any shade of legality under the provisions of the Investment and Securities Act, which is the act that uh, established the Securities and Exchange Commission as a statutory corporation. Because um, under the provisions of that act, the power to appoint the DG is vested in the president on the recommendation of the minister and the approval of the Senate. First and foremost, you did say that it is unlawful for the minister to have removed or suspend Mr. Guazo. Yes. Now, you see, the reason why I made that statement is because the power of appointment is vested in the president by the provisions of the Investment and Securities Act. Now, under the provisions of the Interpretation Act, the power of suspension is included in the power of appointment. In other words, the Interpretation Act states that a person that is vested with the power to appoint has included in that power to appoint the power to remove or the power to suspend, the power to appoint a person to act in that office. In other words, the only person that can remove the Director General of the Securities and Exchange Commission is the president. But, the, but Mr. Guazo is not being removed, he's suspended. The he, minister you know, has an oversight role to be able to say you're suspended pending an investigation. And this is what has happened in this case, isn't it? You know, that is not what has happened. What I've just said is that from the provisions of the Interpretation Act, it is the person who has the power of appointment that has the power of suspension. Because so the power, power of removal or power of suspension, suspension. they are two different things. No, you see, to what, I, and what, to I, what I said is that the interpretation says the power of appointment includes eh, the power to appoint by name, that is A, B, the power to remove or suspend, that is disjunctive. So the person that is reposed the power to appoint is the person that has the power to remove or suspend but subject to the limitations, subject to the limitations that are contained in the power of appointment. Remember when I started my opening statement, I said that the president's power to appoint the DG of SEC is limited, one, by the recommendation of the minister and approval of the Senate. So if you now read this power of appointment with the Interpretation Act that says the power of appointment includes the power of removal or suspension. What that means is that for the president to be able to even suspend the DG of SEC is limited by those limitations contained in his power of appointment. Namely, it is subject to the recommendation of the minister and the approval of the Senate. What all this boils down to is that the minister has absolutely no okay, so power. You're saying that the minister has no oversight role. Absolutely uh, not. He, he, he has oversight function to coordinate this, uh, this uh, agency of government, isn't it? You see, this the, regulator. The, the Securities and Exchange Commission under the Investment and Security is the apex regulatory authority, not the minister. The only power that is vested in the minister under Section 298 of the Investment and Securities Act is to give directives to the Commission without prejudice to any of the powers that are vested in the Commission itself. In other words, yes, Mr. Minister, you can give directives, but your directives must be given without prejudice to the sex power of regulation, as enshrined in Section 13, Section 34. 14 and so many other sections. Uh, let's quickly look at because we have yes. a, a lot of issues to look yes. at. Uh, these issues on one is uh, on both sides. On the SEC uh, DG, for, uh, suspended SEC DG, on the minister side. First and foremost, the SEC DG, the allegations are on two fronts financial impropriety and also being a beneficial, uh, beneficiary of uh, 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 an appoint, uh, uh, a contract within which uh, is a board, I mean, mem uh, director of the board of that company, and also the fact that he actually paid himself emoluments when he, uh, as a DG of SEC. 
Isn't this grave enough? Well, what I can, what I can, the first, my first reaction to that issue is, first and foremost, the, the general powers of administration of SEC itself is vested in the board of SEC. And secondly, the SEC itself has established committees to deal with issues concerning discipline of members of SEC itself or the staff of SEC. So there are procedures established within these uh, bodies to, uh, within SEC itself to investigate these issues and then come to a conclusion one way or the other. That is why they have a disciplinary investigation committee at three levels. You have the level for junior staff, you have the level for senior staff, and then you have the level for the management, for the management uh, staff uh, uh, of, of SEC. So before these issues are um, uh, taken up, I do not honestly believe that it is an issue that can be taken up by the minister. Because the board of SEC itself has set up committees within SEC that are standing committees to deal with this issue. Now, as to the question of him paying himself, I, I really frankly do not understand that because at the time I believe this issue arose, there was a board of SEC. And from everything available in the media, it went through the normal channels for payment. So the payment was made by the commission and not by the DG himself. Yeah, another issue is the issue of was it proper for the minister to have met with O and Do, knowing that SEC was investigating the matter. Is that a usual procedure? That is absolutely unusual. In fact, frankly, that is an act that undermines the integrity and the independence of SEC as the apex regulator. Like I said, Section 298 that gives the minister power to give directives to the commission is subject to the fact that those directives must be without prejudice to the provisions of the Act. And one of the key provisions of the Act is that the commission shall be the apex regulatory authority for the capital market. Now, the minister coming in, in what, he has completely, she has completely undermined She's that status. Can she just find she a way? She is not the coordinator. That is the point I'm trying to make. If you look at the composition of SEC itself, there are about nine commissioners. The part-time chairman, you have the director general, that's the DG. You have three executive commissioners. You have a representative of the Ministry of Finance. You have a representative of the Central Bank of Nigeria. And then you have two part-time. So the status of the minister in, on the SEC board is as a representative of the Ministry of Finance. All right. Uh, as we close now, yes. the House of Representatives of waiting on this matter, should we be expecting anything grand in all of this? Uh, and perhaps maybe we can see it publicly. I hope it is a public hearing because the public hearing will afford everybody who is aggrieved because it's not, to my view, it is not only the DG that is aggrieved by the actions of the minister. There are two employees, two staffs of SEC, that have been that were, that were also suspended right. by the minister okay. in flagrant disregard of the staff manual of SEC, in flagrant disregard right. of even the public service rules. Mr. Emoko, uh, we must go. Thank you so much for your thought. Legal practitioner, Mr. Robert Emoko, talking to us on the program tonight. Thank you so much Thank for your time. You so much for well, Channel's political satire program, The Other News, season two, debuts tonight. Thursday, 7.30 p.m. So sit tight, everyone, and enjoy the season first episode, which comes up right after this break. Uh, that's our show for tonight, everyone. Many thanks for being part of it. I'm Shoa Kimale. Bye-bye.